Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm standing by the River Misborn in Chaffles of Peter Village Centre. We finished our last video just there. The river goes through the culvert underneath the 1960s shopping complex. So if you watch my Chaffles and Peter Village videos, you'll be able to see what was there before that. There's some of the older buildings that weren't demolished. So in the Chaffles of Peter videos, I talk about how the village used to be. But just to give you an idea what the river was like, there was a ford here and some older buildings there which were all demolished and they put the river through a ford. So what we're going to do, as I said at the end of the last video, I'll show you where this this culvert here ends. It's not that exciting but after that the river becomes really quite interesting. So um, come with me and let's follow the River Misborn through Chalfont St Peter out into Chalfont Park and beyond. So I've just come round behind the back of the shopping complex. This really isn't the prettiest part of Chalfont St Peter, but here is the other end of that culvert. There's the river, so it emerges from underneath the shop. So we were a moment ago just the other side of there and the car park. The river now it disappears into some bushes, flows through residential and industrial area. There's a few offices, a few factories. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through the houses and um, I'm going to walk on to the next exciting bit of River Bisbourne. And I promise it's really going to get more interesting now. So the River Misborn has flown through the offices and a couple of industrial places into a housing estate. Here it is, just down here now. Back to being more like a little stream again. The A413, as you possibly can hear, is just the other side of those trees. So I'm going to follow the river now. You can see just coming up here, there's a bridge over the river. Now we've been to this bit before. When we did one of the other Chalfonts and Peter videos, I came along here and we also went down that footpath. So have a look at the link on the screen now. You'll be able to see that video. So here, the river goes under, um, I suppose it's a cross between a bridge and a culvert. I suppose really it is a bridge. It's um, the road kind of skews around it and then it emerges just down there. I don't think we can see it. Uh, yeah, you can see it. Yeah, there we go. Just through the fence, the river flows along the back of people's gardens. And this footpath will take us to beside the A413. Now, it's just up here where the river does one of my favourite bits of its course. Now, I don't know how easy it's going to be for me to show this to you, but I'm going to have a good go at trying. Um, it's going to be a bit of traffic dodging though in a moment. So we're just coming to the end of this footpath here is the dual carriageway, the A413. So the same road which has been following the river since Great Missingdon. There's a roundabout just up here. So the river is now somewhere in those trees. Um, if I'd done this, say, in the winter, um, it wasn't actually flowing, I don't think, in the winter. It started to flow through again in about January, February. But it might have been a bit easier to have seen, but then, like I said, if it wasn't flowing, um, there perhaps wouldn't have been as much point in making a video. But we will see the river again shortly. That's always a bit of a clue of water, a weeping willow. Which seems to have just dropped a branch down. So, the river now is, we're going to see it any second now. We're just coming up to a big roundabout where um, the effect is the bypass of Chalfont St Peter, you know, um, connects to the lower road, which would have been the old road through Chalfont St Peter. So here is the river. Don't look like we can see it a great deal because again, oh, we can see a bit, um, trees and bushes, etc. But what it does here, this is the bit I really like, it goes into the middle of the roundabout. So this is the challenging bit and thankfully there's no cars coming. So I'm going to run across the road now and uh, here we are. We are now in the roundabout and um, the river flows right through the middle. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go round to the other side and uh, I'll show you where it goes after it's flown through the roundabout. So I'm now in the middle of the roundabout. I came over by that bridge there. The river flows right through the middle and out there. So I've now got to, in a moment, negotiate the traffic and try and get out. This will probably be the hardest and 
possibly most dangerous bit of this explore but after that it should all be a lot easier and a lot safer i have been on here once before when i was little um i you know as soon as i was old enough to go out on my own i was determined to come and see the river here and i know another time and perhaps i should have done this today i wore wellies and just waded my way under the bridge um i didn't wear wellies today so i can't get out that way so i am going to climb back out here it's a funny place this roundabout because it's nice and peaceful apart from the noise of the traffic it just seems so sort of you know it's like it's your own little world there's no one else here i know i'm the only person on this roundabout so um I'm now going to, as I said, I'm going to find my way up through the bushes, get to over there and um, we'll carry on following the river through to Chalfont Park. So I found my way off the roundabout. A moment ago I was just over there. I've come to a rather clogged up bit of river. Unfortunately there's loads of branches and a load of rubbish has all got clogged up here so that's um you know interfering with the flow a bit and it doesn't look particularly pleasant but after this bridge you can see the river goes over another bridge and then it begins to flow into the Gerrard's Cross Golf Club and Chalfont Park so um from now on I'm gonna do the walk on more proper paths rather than this area around roadsides so um yeah we're going to go into Chalfont Park we've been here before when we did the tributaries of the River Misborn so have a look in that video coming up on screen now and um, we will at some point in the future I'll do one on the actual estate the house etc so I'm going to carry on down this way there's the other bridge so yeah into Chalfont Park we go so we're now crossing George Cross Golf Club you can just see the river is just down there so I won't go down to it because it's um, not part of the public footpath. The public footpath goes right across here and then the river goes into the woods. Now we've been in those woods before because when we did tributaries of the River Misborn um, we were in there because that is where one of the tributaries joins the main river. So um, yeah we're now going to sort of leave the golf course behind so you can just see down there the bridges and um, that's where the river comes across and here private is that one this is the public footpath so uh, the place I'm going to show you now you will have seen this before if you've watched my tributaries of the River Misborn but we're going to go and have a look again and it's um this is what I mean I like how the river becomes I just think it comes quite varied off after Charles and St Peter I think it's quite interesting through Great Missingdon and everything so the river is just down there just the other side of these bushes in the trees there's an area just up here where we'll go in and have a look and um, just over the other side is Chalfont Park House so we'll make our way over to Chalfont well we won't actually go over to Ch Chalfont Park House in today's video we'll go there in a future video so um, what we shall do is go through here and um, here we find the river so the river flows along just through here and then it trickles down into the lake just up there what I'm gonna do I'm gonna run over the other side of the lake um, or over the river rather and I'll show you the little waterfall where it goes down into the lake so I've just come over to the other side of the river you can see the waterfall comes down here and then it opens out into um, Chalfont Park Lake which is um, where are we just over here so we go through these oh, no, I mean, just sipping there just go through the rhododendrons and here is Chalfont Park Lake so what I'm going to do now I'm going to have to get back across the other side of the river I'm going to follow the lake right down to the other end and um, Chalfont Park House is just behind the trees over there but we'll do Chalfont Park in a future video so let's go and have a look further down the lake so 
So I've now come further down the lake and I found all these Canada geese with their goslings swimming around on the water. Chalfont Park House is just that way, a little way. You used to be able to look across the lake and you've got a really nice view of the house, but you can't see that now because it's all so grown up along there. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to carry on along the lake that way and um, I'll show you what's down at the other end. So here we are, another hundred or so yards down the lake. There's this fallen tree. I did think about walking across it, but um, I thought I didn't really fancy a swim if I tripped and fell in. You can't really see it on camera, but the water is so clear here, which is really nice. So as I said, Chalfon Park House is just down there, but the trees have really grown up so much you can't see it. I remember though as a child, you used to look across there and you've got a really nice view of the lake at Chalfon Park and the house behind. So what we're gonna do now we're going to continue along the footpath and um, we're going to go and find the end of the lake and then after that this walk's going to get a bit complicated there's a few points where i can access it but i can't exactly follow the river which i kind of have been able to do pretty much all the way from little missingdon to here you can follow the river or keep fairly close beyond here it gets complicated it's going to involve i haven't got to go on any more roundabouts but it's going to involve me walking along beside the A413 dual carriageway and I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. If there's a sort of a easy verge to walk along I will do that but it might be that I have to kind of go off into Jarrah's Cross into the houses and come back down to where there's a footpath but we'll see that in a moment. Still more of the lake looking very lovely and calm. Can you hear that sound though? The sound of water. So that probably gives you an idea what we are coming up towards now at the end of the lake. It's just here. And we have a waterfall, the weir at the end of the lake. So if we have a look out here, here it is. I remember paddling in there as a child. I used to come here, there actually used to be about here somewhere there was more space there were some picnic tables we used to come here have a picnic paddle in the river i even remember fishing once and um i bought back a load of like little pond insects and built a pond in the back garden and i was really disappointed because they all died like within a couple of days but you know when you're sort of eight years old that's the kind of things you do so yeah there's the the weir i'm gonna now carry on here i'll show you the last point we of contact we have with the river before it disappears through private grounds and eventually towards the Chiltern main line which we've got coming up so there's bridge here so it's a private drive it's a public footpath so that way goes back into the Chalfont Park estate if you continue up there the footpath will take you up to the other side of Chalfont St Peter and this is where we last see the river now this is where we finished the tributaries of the River Misborn um, video. So the tributary joins just there. If you look that way you can again see the weir through the bushes. I'll just, since we did it last time we did it the other way, we'll go this way. Because what I'm thinking is that tributary, when we did it, the tributary that flows in front of Chalfont Park, had water in at the beginning, it had a bit missing in the middle, but then down this end it had water in it again. So I thought let's go and have a look, see if it's got water. It looks like it has. So yeah, here we are up here there's a ford so when we were in the last video at champs and giles i said the ford and mill lane i thought was the only ford on the river misborn as far as i'm aware it's the only ford on the main course of the river misborn but there is this ford here on the tributary so there's a bit of water in it still um but it's strange how there's a bit of water missing in the middle so um there's a bike about to go through the ford. um yeah so we'll go across here so there's a confluence just behind that person's garden and then the river it goes off up there i'm going to go that way now and i'm going to try and find some more of the river which is like i said might be easier said than done but we're definitely going to see some more misborn today so let's go and find it I said it was going to get a bit complicated as I came along here. I've come along the middle of the dual carriageway because someone 
has very kindly mown it all the way along, which made walking the last few hundred yards from Chalfont Park to here quite easy. But it's here where it gets, I can't really show you much, but you can probably just see some water through there. Now, if you look on a map, that's a weird dog leg off the river. So it's either one of two things. It's either a spring that flows out to the river that way, or it's, um, it was made as like a fish pond, I'm not sure, fed by the river. But then the river itself is over there somewhere. I remember when I was a child, we used to come along this road and as I gradually got taller, I started to notice you could see the river. And I'd always been intrigued to know exactly where the river went. And um, I knew about a footpath that crossed it, but you know, as I got older and started looking at maps, I gradually worked it out. I'm now going to carry on along here um, and try and find a bit more of the Misbourne. There is a footpath just up here though that we'll be able to go and get a better look at it. So I found the footpath which took me off the A413. Just takes us down here past this field and the river is just up here. If I was to follow this all the way, I'd come up to Denham Lane, which is the road which runs from higher Denham through to the top end of Chalfont St Peter. I'm not gonna go all the way up there because it's quite a long way and I wanna to stick to the river. Now, on the other side of that fence, it's private now, but that I believe was an old mill. But from what I see here, I'm starting to wonder if perhaps the mill might have been here. So if anyone wants to comment and tell me, please do. Because if we have a look here, we've got the main course of the river there and there's a, another course here that's, which is dried up. Now, I came down here um, a couple of weeks ago and there was water in this one. Not a lot, admittedly, but now it's dried up. So it must be that it obviously only flows when the main course is of a certain height, water flows through here. But the fact is that there's two courses and I don't know if you can see it, but down there, there is some masonry. It's very hard to see. I know because it's quite overgrown. So I, my guess is that the mill might have actually been here. So I'm effectively standing on an island now. So I think the mill possibly was here. But if anyone wants to comment and tell me whether I'm right or wrong, you know, I'd be grateful to hear from you. And now we come to this bridge, which takes us over the main course of the River Misbourne. So um, that's a really, really nice tranquil bit of river there and flows off underneath us. There is another footpath soon. Now this footpath is quite interesting. It goes around the edge of this field, where as you can see, there's some cows. You probably can't see it, but up over there is the motorway. So this footpath further up goes over a bridge over the motorway. Um, the water goes off down there. You can see there's, if you wonder why there's a fence into the river, I think what they've done, they've created a little section for the cows to come and drink the water which to me would say it might be safe to drink this water, but I wouldn't want to drink the water from down there. I can see also, I know the camera might not be picking it out, but there's cows right over there. Some of them have got calves, so I'm not gonna, well, the footpath actually goes around the field. We're not gonna go into there, I don't want to disturb them. I'm gonna now head back to the A413 and find the next footpath, which also comes up over River Misbourne in this direction. So to give you an idea what the last bit of the walk's been like, I've been walking along this busy main road. I, I'd not want to be that cyclist. This is the A413, so I've walked along here, along the verge. It's not been particularly pleasant. Um, come to this area here, all for this public footpath here. It's actually a public bridleway. And this is where we're going to find our final section of the River Misbourne in today's video. So I'm now making my way along this bridleway. The M25 is just over there. That was the bridge which I was standing underneath a moment ago. The river is just coming to join us now. And really beyond here, going downstream that way, it's inaccessible for quite a long period. I mean, it's been quite difficult, as I said, getting to here, walking along the edge of that main road. I'm gonna follow the footpath and go back to Chalmers and Peter over the hill because I don't want to walk along the edge of the dual carriageway again. So the river is in there in amongst all the rushes. So it's um, a rather unusual bit of, um, of public footpath. I wonder who actually comes down here because it's a bit of a, once you get to there, where do you go? I suppose you can go up to Giles Cross or Tatling End. Um, but you know, I wouldn't say it's the most exciting thing. I'd say 
with my videos I always say you know if you want to go and visit them you always they're always places worth visiting for today's one I'd say yes go to Jalfont Park but what I'm doing now unless you really really want to see it um personally I wouldn't recommend it but that said now we finally see the river again I think this bit was worth coming for so we've got a ford so another ford but this isn't um a public road it's a farm track which doesn't look like it's ever used there's a bridge here for me to cross so i haven't got to walk through the water so here we go so yeah this is i came down here when i was quite young my dad and i came down here on our bikes and we rode through the ford so i have been through the ford once so the river goes off that way round behind the field with the cows in and having a look on this side you can see there's a viaduct that is the Chalfont viaduct also known as the Misbourne viaduct it takes the Chiltern main line over the valley of the river Misbourne it, the construction was started in 1902 it was finished in 1906 it was actually worked on by one of my great great grandfathers so that is also the the motorway goes through it as well so they're it was rather convenient when they built the motorway that the bridge was there or the viaduct was there because they could put the motorway through and then somewhere down there i'm going to try and get as close to it as i can there's a culvert and there's a train um on the heading towards london marathon unfortunately or fortunately it's got water in but unfortunately for me i've got to somehow find my way across this bit here to continue on up there so give me a moment i'm going to try and cross the river and uh, we should carry on Well, I found my way across and now we're going to walk up towards the viaduct and somewhere beneath the viaduct is the culvert which takes River Misborn under the motorway. So this viaduct was originally built to carry the railway over the river and there's another viaduct just a little way towards George Cross which carries the railway over the road, the A413. So I had to walk under that one. I didn't make a video because it was, you know, the edge of a narrow road but it was quite interesting. Um, now, can we, I'm trying to show you the culvert, but I don't know if we can. It'd be interesting to, um, I wouldn't, but to walk through it when the river was dried up, but how, oh yeah, here we are. What can we see here? Um, okay, there's, yeah, I think we can see it. So yeah, that is where the river comes out from under the motorway. And this is where I'm going to leave today's video. We started at a culvert, we finished at a culvert. But with the viaduct in the background, before we go, I've got one more thing I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what this scene looked like before the motorway. Have a look at this. So there we go, complete with first generation DMU. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. In the next video, I'm going to start in High Denham and we're going to go on to where the River Misborn joins the River Colne. So thanks very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends, tell anyone you think might be interested. Goodbye.